I'm Elise Herrera. And I'm Jeff Hartzell. And we are Hee Haw Studio. And today we're going to be showing you how to build your own DIY bottle jack press. We'd like to thank Ross Mazapapa and Zygo Press for their help and support making this demo. Here's a quick look at the press we're going to be making today. This platen press uses the bottle jack as its primary muscle. The press is suitable for relief in monoprint and functions well as an alternative to traditional solutions. We're starting by measuring and cutting down our 1x1s to length. The cuts we'll need are 6 at 5 inches long, 2 at 21 inches long, and 2 at 18 inches long. We'll be making all of our cuts with a circular saw. Be sure to check the link in the description for the full plans for this build. It's important when making cuts with a circular saw to account for the width of the blade itself. Most circular saws have a guide to line up your cut. It's important to understand how to safely use all the equipment you're going to be using. You can use the circular saw in combination with a speed square to ensure your cuts are straight. A table saw and miter saw are better alternatives to the circular saw if they're available to you. The circular saw, however, is relatively inexpensive and a versatile saw. Next, we'll be measuring and cutting down to length our section of 2x4. The cuts we'll need from the 2x4 are two sections at 21 inches long. These two sections of 2x4 will be combined together to form the cross beam of our platen press. Here I'm using a speed square to follow the line I marked. For most of the cuts in the build, absolute precision isn't necessary, but do your best to remain accurate.
Now we're taking our two sections of 21 inch long 1x1s and gluing and clamping them together. These 1x1s will form the center of our frame and act as a mounting slot for our angled steel. Lay down a generous amount of wood glue and spread it even. We'll clamp these two sections together as we allow the glue to set. Here we're doing a dry fit to make sure that everything is working so far. Next, we'll cut down the boards we need from our 3 quarter inch plywood. For these cuts, we'll need two boards at 18 by 16 inches, one at 9 by 9, and one at 6 by 6. Here we clamp down a straight edge to let the circular saw's guide run along to ensure we have a straight cut. We can start assembling our frame by gluing the 5 inch sections of 1 by 1 to the 18 inch sections. We've measured and marked the center on both pieces to ensure that it's going in the right spot. Now we'll glue and clamp these together and allow the glue to set.
We'll now attach this half of the frame to the center 21 inch long pieces. We'll also fasten the center block with a screw. Repeat the same to the other half of the frame. Once the two halves are glued to the center of the frame, your frame is complete. We'll now attach our 18 by 16 inch board to the base. Here we'll be marking, countersinking, and drilling in screws to attach this board to the frame. The countersink bit is used on the drill to create a pocket for the heads of the screws to lay in. With the holes pre-drilled, we'll now glue the board to the frame. Now we'll drive in screws into the frame and the pre-drilled holes we just made.
Here we're drilling the holes for our bolts to go through to connect our angled steel to the frame. These holes we definitely should have pre-drilled before assembling the frame, but luckily we had just enough clearance to make it work. We'll now connect the two angled steels to the frame with a bolt, washer, and nut. Here we're drilling the same holes for the bolts to connect the angled steel, but this time in the cross beam. With the two pieces of cross beams glued and clamped together, we'll now also attach two pieces of mending plate to the bottom of the cross beam. These mending plates have pre-drilled holes, so just line them up in the center and screw them in. Here we're going to start to assemble the platen. With our other 18 by 16 board, our 9 by 9 and our 6 by 6, we'll measure, center, glue, and clamp together to form the platen. Instead of clamping these together, we ended up just putting some heavy books on top to allow the glue to set. We're now marking the locations for our eye screws to go. We measured in about two inches from each corner in all four corners and made a mark with the eye screw to give us our spot to drill. We're now using a piece of masking tape to give us a guide to not pre-drill too deep into the plywood. We then insert the eye screws into the pre-drilled holes, hand tighten, and then use pliers to tighten all the way. Once the eye screws are attached, you can place your platen on top of the base and attach the bungees around the cross beam to the eye screws. Print 
anything on the bottle jack press. We can print anything from a relief to monoprinting styles of plexiglass, things along those lines. We can't really do etchings. This doesn't have that much pressure. Um, I'm just making a regular set of ink here, just adding some set swell since my ink is pretty thick. Uh, you'll actually notice this in the print. I'm using a type high linoleum block, but you could use just a plain linoleum sheet. It doesn't have to be high in any way. You could also use a phone core jig around your plate for your registration. I think that would also help with the wrinkles that happen when you're printing this high without a, a jig. So the packing for this is the same. You put your paper first, then your two layers of newsprint. And for a blanket, I'm just using a towel, anything that you can find at home. I'm just folded it over a few times. You want to place your block directly in the center of the press. Once in position, you can lower down the top board. Once in position, you can lower down the top board and replace it with the bottle jack. Make sure the bottle jack is centered on there correctly. Tighten the little bottom knob and you'll be able to activate the jack. You want to jack it down until you can't go any farther. and cranking it so you can't crank it any farther. Once you loosen the press, it should automatically lighten up. I like to remove the jack just so it makes it easier to get underneath the top plank. You can push it back down for the starting position. And you get that nice embossment on the newsprint. That's when you know you've done it right.
So you can do other techniques like mono printing. I'm just going straight to plexi. Um, my ink is pretty thick, like I said before, so I am adding a pretty decent amount here. It's the same process when you mono printing. The only difference here is I folded the blanket one extra time to add the extra layer of cushion. It adds a little bit more pressure and being that it's a flatter surface, I was less worried of the wrinkling of the paper. So I just wanted that pressure to be extra tight. Once again, cranking until you can't crank any farther. Getting my extra pair of hands to help me out again here. So we printed this one and then we also printed the ghost. As you can see, you can do multiple techniques here. 